From the dawn of creation, humanity stood in perfect harmony with God, but that relationship was shattered by the disobedience of our first parents, Adam and Eve. This act of rebellion known as the Fall, introduced sin into the world, severing our connection with God and plunging us into a state of separation and spiritual death. But God, in His infinite love and mercy, did not abandon us in our fallen state. Instead, He initiated a divine plan of salvation, sending His only Son, Jesus Christ, to earth to restore our relationship with Him and ultimately redeem us from the penalty and power of sin. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video, but before I do that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell if you're new to get notified of my future uploads. This narrative is about love, redemption, and transformation. It's about a journey from imperfection to perfection, from brokenness to wholeness, and from death to eternal life. It all begins with the story of Adam and Eve. In the beginning God created a perfect world. He placed the first humans, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, a paradise filled with beauty and abundance. They were created in God's image and enjoyed a close relationship with their Creator. However, there was a single restriction. God warned Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This command was not to limit their joy but to protect them. You see God wanted Adam and Eve and all their descendants to choose to love Him freely out of their own will. But then a creature slithered into this perfect picture, the serpent, who was in fact Satan in disguise. He enticed Eve with the promise of knowledge and wisdom, leading her to doubt God's goodness. Tragically, both Eve and Adam chose to eat the forbidden fruit, ignoring God's warning. This act of disobedience, as described in Genesis chapter 3, is the first sin recorded in human history. With this act, sin entered the world, a rebellion against God's perfect order. The consequences were immediate and devastating. Not only did Adam and Eve experience a sense of guilt and shame, but their close relationship with God was broken. They were expelled from the garden, and the world was cursed with suffering and death. Sin is the violation of God's law. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 tells us, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Through Adam and Eve's actions, sin was introduced into the world, and the penalty of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 states, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. With the introduction of sin, humanity was in need of a savior. God in his infinite love had a plan to save us. A plan born out of an unfathomable depth of compassion and love, a plan to rescue us from the clutches of sin. This love is not dependent on our past actions or our current struggles. As Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God's love was so great that he sent his only son Jesus to pay the ultimate price for our sins. As John chapter 3 verse 16 famously states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This act wasn't just about death, but also about giving life, a life that is full, abundant, and eternal. God's plan of salvation is not about our works or deeds, it's about His grace. As Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9 puts it, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's a gift, freely given, waiting to be received. However, receiving this gift requires confession of our sins, repentance, and a belief in Jesus' sacrifice and forgiveness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 tells us, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Repentance is a turning away from sin to Jesus. It's not a work we do to be saved, but a decision we make to follow Jesus. Furthermore, Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 47, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Jesus is the only one who can save us from our sins. This is because Jesus has paid the price for our sins and is able to reconcile us to the Father. Jesus, God's Son, was sent to earth to fulfill this plan of salvation. Jesus was no ordinary man, he was God in the flesh. Speaking of Jesus, John chapter 1 verses 1 and 14 states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, 
full of grace and truth. Jesus perfectly exemplified the character of the Father. When Philip asked him to show him the Father, Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 9, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus traveled far and wide teaching people about God's kingdom and his love for humanity. His messages were simple yet profound, often conveyed through parables that resonated with the common man. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and offered a helping hand to the downtrodden. Yet it was not just his teachings but also his actions that revealed the depth of God's love and compassion. He was a friend to the sinners, the outcasts, the marginalized. He broke bread with tax collectors, spoke to women with respect, and treated children with kindness. He was a living demonstration of God's character, loving, forgiving, and just. However, Jesus' mission on earth was not just about teaching and healing, it was about salvation. He was the sacrificial lamb, the one who would take upon himself the sins of the world. In the ultimate act of love and sacrifice, Jesus willingly went to the cross. He endured the pain, the humiliation and the separation from his heavenly Father. He bore our sins, our guilt and our shame. His death was not a defeat but a victory, a victory over sin and death. Through his death, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He bridged the gap between humanity and God, making it possible for us to be reconciled with our Creator. His sacrifice was the ultimate demonstration of God's love for us. A love so deep and unconditional that he was willing to give his only son for our salvation. But Jesus did more than just pay the price for our sins. He came not only to cleanse us from our past mistakes, but also to grant us victory over sin. This victory isn't about us trying harder or being perfect on our own. No, it's about the transformative power of Christ's love in us. When Jesus lived on earth he was tempted in every way that we are, yet he did not sin. As it is written in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. This is the victory that Jesus offers us. The ability to resist sin, not by our might, but by his powers. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6 verse 14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. What does this mean? It means that when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer bound by the chains of our past mistakes and present struggles. We are under the grace of God, the unmerited favor that He extends to us through His Son, Jesus. This victory over sin is not a one-time event. It's a daily surrender to Jesus, a daily choice to allow Him to guide us. As it is written in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. The cross symbolizes death to sin and a life lived in obedience to God. By daily taking up our cross and following Jesus, we are choosing to live a life of victory over sin. But remember, victory over sin doesn't mean that we won't make mistakes or face struggles. It means that when we do, we have an advocate in Jesus who understands our weaknesses and provides the grace and strength to overcome. Through Jesus we are not only forgiven, but we are also empowered to overcome sin. This victory is ours for the taking. All we have to do is accept Jesus and let him guide us on this journey of faith. Receiving this gift of salvation involves a personal decision. It is a journey of self-realization, faith, and surrender. It begins by acknowledging our human condition and confessing we are sinners. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all struggle, we all falter, and it's this universal human experience that connects us all. The next step is to repent and believe in the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Finally, we must accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. This act of acceptance is beautifully encapsulated in John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Accepting Jesus is not just about securing a place in heaven, it is about becoming a child of God, becoming a part of His divine family right here, right now. It's important to remember that this salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. As stated in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. 
This journey of salvation is deeply personal and unique to each individual yet grounded in a universal truth of love, sacrifice and grace. It's a journey that transforms lives, offering a fresh start and a new identity in Christ. It's a journey that beckons us towards a deeper, more meaningful existence. Salvation is a gift, freely given, but it must be accepted. Salvation is not just about being saved from sin, it's about being transformed. This transformative power of salvation is perhaps its most miraculous aspect. It's not just about wiping the slate clean but it's about becoming a whole new person. Imagine if you will, a caterpillar. It crawls on its belly confined to the lower levels of existence. But then, it enters a cocoon, and something phenomenal happens. It emerges as a butterfly, free to soar above the earth, transformed in a way it could never have imagined. This is the power of salvation. The Bible speaks of this transformation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is not a change that comes from our own efforts or willpower. It is a change that comes from surrendering to God, from accepting Jesus into our lives. It is a change that comes from the inside out. In the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This transformation is not about becoming a better version of ourselves, but about letting Christ live within us. It's about becoming a vessel of His love, His grace, and His truth. The change that comes with salvation is not always immediate. It's a journey, a process of growing and maturing in our faith. But the promise is clear. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are transformed. We are made new. We are given the power to live a life of love, joy, and peace. We are given the power to overcome sin and to live a life that glorifies God. So remember this, friends. Salvation is more than just a ticket to heaven. It's a life-altering, soul-transforming experience that begins the moment we accept Christ into our hearts and continues every day as we walk with Him. Through salvation, we become new creations in Christ. So, what does this all mean for you? Well, it means you have a decision to make. A decision that could change your life forever. You've heard about the fall of humanity, the introduction of sin into the world, and how God, in His infinite love for us, sent His Son Jesus Christ to save us. This act of divine love had Jesus pay the ultimate price for our sins, not just to redeem us, but to grant us victory over sin. This victory is not about forcing oneself to be good, but a spontaneous outflowing of Christ's life within you. But how do you embrace this victory? How do you accept this life-transforming gift of salvation? The answer is simple. You need to confess your sins to God in prayer, repent, believe in Jesus, and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. The choice is yours. Will you accept this gift of salvation? Let me know in the comments section down below. Did you know that Satan was once a perfect beautiful angel named Lucifer? However, Lucifer's story took a dark turn. Driven by pride, jealousy, and discontent, Lucifer desired to unseat God and be worshipped instead. As he result, Lucifer fell from grace and became Satan. Learn the story of Lucifer's origin and fall by clicking on the screen to watch my video entitled, The Fall of Lucifer, How an Angel Became a Devil. Thank you for watching and God bless you.